if you're scratching your head about ratios, mixes, volumes and quantities for your concrete, when all you want to do is just pour a little bit of concrete for some foundation footings, maybe a few steps, a small ground floor slab or some mini piles for a garden room or house extension, I'll show you my simple way to measure how much by the bags and batch with the right mix ratio depending on your application so you're confident about putting your concrete in a mixer. Spare yourself ages scouring the internet, bamboozling yourself with all that jargon and engineer speak, all the information and standards and use this instead to just get on with it. In some previous videos I showed you how straightforward it is for the well-informed DIYer and self-builder to dig and prepare trenches to receive a ready-mix lorry with all the concrete delivered to your door, to quickly pour your own concrete for foundations and slabs, but often you can't rely on ready mix, impossible access, timing and availability, geography and minimum order often mean you need to hand mix. But the big thing that is a bit tricky for your hand mixing projects is getting that mix ratio right. How many bags of cement, how many of sand and is that sharp sand as opposed to building sand, aggregate, what is stone chipping and strength, what does M25, M10 mean? I just want to do my shed base. I pulled these questions together and created a spreadsheet which will give everything you need for any strength and type, be it a concrete slab, strip foundation or footing, including the number of bags to buy and the cost for you to more easily make your own concrete mixes for your own projects. For the spreadsheet, you just enter your mix ratio and your total amount of concrete along with your local supplier's prices and you will get an estimate of your overall cost and your queries. If you're interested in the maths of concrete, I've used what's called the empirical method because I think it's the easiest to understand. Each method to calculate provides slightly different results, but concrete anyway is an imperfect mix since you're dealing with different quarries and moisture contents, so it's good to use a couple of methods of calculation to double check your requirements. Now in order to get your shopping list, there are only two things that you need to enter on the spreadsheet to make this work for any mix of concrete. Number one is the size of your hole, trench or surface where you're putting your concrete. And number two, you need to enter what your application is. For example, whether it's a foundation, slab or something leaner, for example, a mortar mix and the strength that those applications require. And then it will pump out the number of bags and the quantities and costs of the materials. So with all that said, Let's jump in and let's start with the first thing that you need, the size or your quantity of concrete measured in cube, which is going in your hole or your trenches. Let's look at some examples you're likely to be using for the strip foundation to this house extension. We measure concrete in volume or cube, length times width times depth equals volume. This is approximately this much cube from the size of the trench. I've done a video here showing how I measured that. Straightforward to measure on the back of an envelope. Or another example, these mini piles for this micro home project, a wee bit more complicated area of a circle, pi r squared times depth of hole gives you a volume and we enter that volume here on the spreadsheet and side note I've produced a separate spreadsheet you can download for calculating the volume of your mini piles just count your holes and enter your depth link in the description. The second thing that you need to think about is what mix you need but if you have your strength requirement I've created this drop down list which gives strength based on application. The strength, which is described with the letter M, followed by a number, example M15, M20, M35, and you can get this from either your structural engineer's drawing, if you have one, or if you're self-building, something like your garage strip foundation, some garden steps and paths, or a small garden building where you may not be using an engineer, you can get that by looking at the list here and deciding what your number is. Or I will just look up a website such as this, which will give you the strength rating for your particular application. Just to complicate things, an unfortunate part of the construction industry and the regulators that create the legislation, their desire to introduce never-ending and unnecessary jargon and complication. Engineers sometimes use the letter C to show concrete strength. Essentially, numbers still mean the same. Why they do it, only they can answer. What a joke. 
Final thing you need to decide is whether you're going to buy bulk bags of ballast or go for 23 to 35 kilogram bags, which is this drop down list. Bulk bags are of course a fair bit cheaper, but the smaller bags are way easier to get your measurements right. For bulk bags you need to understand gauging. I've talked about how I gauge or measure my ratios in a foolproof way when I'm on site in this video here. Now if you're using sharp sand and aggregate rather than ballast there will be a different calculation. Ballast is great because the sand and aggregate have been mixed together and bagged for you in factories which saves you a load of time and you can use this workshop tab if you do want to mix separately rather than using ballast. Let's use these mini pile foundations as an example and take you step by step how I can use this spreadsheet to get my mix and my quantities. Here's the strength I need and from the drop down list here's the mix. From the volume calculation I explained earlier here's the cube which we enter in the yellow box. And with all those variables in place entering the info into these boxes the yellow highlighted boxes the formulas will automatically populate the remaining variables and with all the formulas working together you'll find here at the end the number of bags and the cost of each and here the overall cost for your particular situation I put the current cost as of today for sand and ballast and linked it below in the description. You just need to update it here if prices have gone up or down or if you can find these materials cheaper in your area. Here's my cube price, here's the number of cement I need, here's my bags of ballast and here's the overall cost. A few things to remember, concrete mixing is a look and feel thing so remember the spreadsheet is a guide and not a prescription. The weight and mix of concrete ballast is dependent on where you are and which supplier you use. Some use three parts stone to two parts sand, other use two parts stone to one part sand. What's more, as the mix of sand and aggregate within the bags varies, depending on the moisture content as it is made and then as it's stored. Even those polythene bags from your local DIY store have a different moisture content depending on when you buy them. For my calculations here I'm always working on the basis of a bag of ballast has two parts aggregate to one part sand. Just double check with your supplier. And if your engineer specified a particular mix in terms of sand and aggregate I recommend avoiding ballast and sticking to separating these ingredients so use this tab. But always get their advice over mine as a general rule and as a check to my spreadsheet I will work on three to four parts ballast to one part cement for areas that require strength and otherwise five to six parts ballast to one of cement since my mixer takes around four bags that's three to one or six to one works perfect with the measuring because it's either three bags of ballast to one of concrete or three bags of ballast to a half bag of concrete and using this method means no shovel gauging required and no waste. I made a video about my old school foolproof method of how I hand mix my concrete here. There are several different concrete ballast mixes you can choose from and I've noted down where you might use one over the other on the spreadsheet. I know that this is just a guide for you. For anything structural in your DIY and home improvement projects you should always seek the advice of a structural engineer over a random guy like me on YouTube. Download links to the spreadsheet below. Hope to see you in the next one.